Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon is a military tactical shooter released on several platforms, the first being titled Ghost Recon with a release date of November 13th, 2001. In the series, you take command of a conceived squad who calls themselves the Ghosts, which is based on the real-life 1st Battalion 5th Special Forces Group. Interestingly, unlike other military special forces roles, the Ghosts' operations are kept highly classified. Like Rainbow Six, Ghost Recon went on to success with releasing several expansions and spin-offs from Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter to Phantoms. Today we'll be looking at Ghost Recon Wildlands, the latest installment in the franchise. I mentioned in my blog, which I've posted a link to in the description, my thoughts about the beta. If you haven't read it yet, do so. If you have read it or if you don't want to waste time, let's get into the game. For starters, your character customization isn't as deep as in other games like Elder Scrolls. You're going to spend about 90% of the time playing dress-up. You'll have more clothes to choose from than a Barbie collection. I just pick whatever and move on. The plot this time is to stop Santa Blanca, a powerful drug cartel that's taken over Bolivia. The cartel is run by El Sueño, a bloodthirsty, money-hungry individual who has the government in his pocket. If that wasn't enough, there are several heads that also help run the operation, each with their own role. Before I get too far ahead of myself, I'll try to keep this review spoiler-free. Moving onward, the gameplay can be best summed up in one word, similar. What I'm getting at is the gameplay has been seen time and time again. Some hit the mark, others miss. This game does both. We're going to do a little something I like to call hit or miss. The main hit is that this game allows for creative freedom. If you want to complete a mission with stealth, go for it. If you want to go in guns blazing, go for it. But keep in mind that there will be missions later in the game that will require stealth, so my advice is to practice stealth with side missions before trying a story mission. Our first miss is not seeing how much experience points are needed to level up, even more so the method of gaining experience points. First and foremost, getting the points requires completing story missions. Simple enough, but it'd be nice to see the progression on screen. Another miss is that you don't gain experience points by killing enemies. Even stranger is the indicator that you leveled up also happens when need be. While I do give props for trying something different, leveling up can be tedious. Even I'm confused. The biggest miss thus far is going to the Ghost Recon Network just to see your stats. Why not just a separate menu? Going back to leveling up, you're going to need two things, skill points and resources. Resources come in the form of food, medicine, communications, and gasoline. Resources are obtained by simply tagging the cash, stealing a specific vehicle, defending a position, or destroying a truck, and then tagging it. Skill points can be obtained by collecting medals or gaining experience by completing missions. Interestingly, both you and your squad mates benefit from upgrading. But does it work? The answer is yes. Yes, it does. When it comes to graphics and scenery, this game hits the mark. Bolivia is vast and gorgeous looking. From desert tones to mountainsides, this game looks fantastic. Character models are also very good, and the animation is very fluid. This game also has a day-to-night sequence, as well as change in weather, and does so without interruption. But this eye candy does come at a price. For PC owners, the more visuals you want, the more VRAM you'll have to crank into the game. But even at low settings, it still looks good. So now we get to the part where we start to see the familiarity a little more clearly. First thing you'll see is that you have three squad mates. While most games have idiots for squad mates, these guys do their job quite nicely. From providing covering fire to reviving, they execute their job without question. In addition, you'll come across members of a rebel faction named Kataris 26, which will aid you from time to time, and they too do their job very well. But don't think for a second that Santa Blanca is fighting this war alone. They've also got support from Unidad, Bolivia's Special Operations Division. Unlike Santa Blanca, these guys will call for reinforcements much faster, and the results can be devastating. That's quite a civil war going on. So does this concept sound familiar? It sure does. Next on the list are the vehicles. We've seen them time and time again. Best example would be Grand Theft Auto V. One thing I noticed is how twitchy the vehicle controls are. In particular, the cars. A light tap of A or D doesn't do much, but hold it down and you'll spin out of control even after releasing the accelerator. The final miss is the covering system. In most games, just the press of a button puts you in cover. Simple enough. In this game, in order to use cover, first you have to duck and then move up against the surface. This makes it very easy to slip off the cover, exposing you to enemy gunfire. So where is our familiarity? We've seen it all before in other games. Some mechanics are executed better than others. Before I forget, let me talk about the gun mechanics. When you aim, you can switch between first and third person view. I like this a lot because it's something I haven't seen before. Oh no, wait, yes I have. Grand Theft Auto V. I could go on and on, but you're getting the idea. One final note is perhaps the coolest sidekick in the game, the drone. It could do things most drones dream. From reconnaissance to killing enemies, this little guy does it all. Overall, Ghost Recon Wildlands is a solid game swimming in mechanics and concepts we've seen before. Ghost Recon Wildlands gets 3.5 stars out of 5. I forgot to mention that this game has a companion app, so as an added bonus, I'll review the Ghost Recon Wildlands app. The purpose of this app is to collect resources that can be transferred to the main game. You'll be doing this through the Gorilla game. You pick your rebel, their destination, and any extras you want them to pick up, like extra XP or the gun icon to increase mission success, etc., and send them on their way. This is all done in real time, but you can fast forward if you don't want to wait. Upon mission success, you'll gain a little bit of acceleration. From time to time, there are missions that can only be completed with specific rebels. 
You may have noticed that I got extra resources during the review. Can only be equal when equality is forced to bomb them. Back Atari would take the fruit of your labor, take the largest portion for himself, and the divide what is left between you and your neighbor. Tengan cuidado. You would not reap what you have sown. You would be left with barely anything. The best way. The app also features a satellite map, but it's kind of useless because the main feature it's missing is that you can't pick your mission with it. It also would have been nice if you can transfer resources to a teammate when you're playing with friends. Overall, this app may be free, but with a few missing features, it's not worth the download. Ghost Recon Wildlands HQ app gets 2.5 stars out of 5.